Walking through that front door is like walking back in time. It's almost a religious experience, to tell you the truth. In 1902, British Naval Commander Robert Falcon Scott led an expedition to the South Pole. Or at least that was their target. Illness and poor planning forced them to turn back about 500 miles from the Pole. They left behind a hut on the coast. A decade later, a more prepared and determined Scott and crew returned to Antarctica and used the same hut as a supply depot. So when I walked in there, I was just, I was just blown away by, I guess, the smells of it. You know, there, uh, there are still seal carcasses um, laying on the floor. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of an old, musty smell. But yet, Antarctica, there's not much moisture in the air, so you don't get a lot of smells in Antarctica often. And so when you get inside of a closed space and you can actually start to smell things, it's, it's really something else. Peter Flagg is a geologist working in Antarctica. He got to go inside Scott's hut and take these amazing photos. It was really interesting to see some of these labels on some of this food and, and uh, just see what they were eating, the biscuits. And um, the, the packaging is, is beautiful and, and uh, lots, of, lots of biscuits, lots of tea, lots of you know, simple things. I'm a big dog lover, and so it, it was nice to see that there were boxes and boxes of dog biscuits all over this, this hut as well. Probably as many dog biscuit boxes as there were people food boxes. When Scott and four of his men finally reached the South Pole in January 1912, they were devastated to find a Norwegian explorer, Roald Amundsen, had beat them there by just five weeks. Deflated, they started the 800-mile march back. This was the oddest room in the house. This is a uh, room full of uh, meat, full of carcasses that are hanging up uh, on the walls, and I believe uh, it is a pig and a sheep. And then there's some various bones that I'm not sure what they are. So this meat was just left there hanging uh, when they left. The temperatures are so cold that things don't rot really easily. It's so dry that, that if, a, if something dies and it's not eaten by something, it just sort of loses all its moisture over time and just mummifies. About half of the way back, one crew member died of frostbite, hunger, and exhaustion. Weeks later, as their progress slowed and they hunkered down on the ice, a second crew member stumbled out of the tent in a howling blizzard and was never seen again. When you work in remote Antarctica, you just, you realize how incredibly important having some place to go and be warm and be dry is. I mean, you're going to die if you don't have this thing. Caught in a blizzard, exhausted and out of food, Scott and his two remaining crew members died in their tents, just 11 miles from a supply depot. I think anybody who works in Antarctica, especially people who remote work in remote Antarctica, have to really respect these people who, you know, came here in wooden ships and without any modern materials, you know, especially modern clothing, and were able to survive in these climates. 